zero. Welcome to this video, which is the second part of an introduction to AC steady state analysis. In this video, we will complete the example that we started in part one, in which we were trying to find the voltage across a capacitor in a circuit where the source was a sinusoid of magnitude 10 volts. So this is the circuit, and before we uh, uh, go much farther, I need to correct an oversight. Uh, in step one, we found this phasor representation for the source voltage. What I should have done at the same time is replaced this time domain Vc of t, that is, it's a function of time, with V sub C, this is a phasor representation of that same voltage, because all the computations I'm going to do will involve um, computing uh, with phasors and um, impedances. So with that, we can now go look at our steps. Uh, we've got impedance sources to phasors, elements to impedances. The next step is solving for phasor currents and voltages. So let's try to do that. If we go back to our circuit, we see that the voltage from here to here is 10 volts with an angle of zero. And we see that the, the 20 k ohm and the capacitor are in series with each other. This implies, since we know the voltage across the series combination, um, we can use the, uh, uh, the uh, voltage divider to find V sub C. So we have V sub C is 10 volts at an angle of 0 times 2.65 k ohms at an angle of minus 90 degrees over 2.65 k ohms at an angle of minus 90 plus 20 k ohms. Okay, so I have the impedance of the element that I'm getting the voltage across divided by the sum of the impedances. Now to make this somewhat easier, I am going to, well, and let me back up. This is a perfectly valid expression for V sub C, but the next thing I need to do is actually compute what V sub C is. I need to take all of these complex numbers and work out the operations on them and get a complex number for V sub C. And in order to make this work more easily in Wolfram Alpha, which has become, for the moment at least, my favorite uh, computing tool, I need to, it's easier if I change this from uh, polar representation to rectangular. And in step two, you'll remember we got um, the capacitor impedance in polar, or I'm sorry, in rectangular, and then changed it to polar. So this is kind of a little bit of extra work, but it's useful, I guess. So 10 volts at an angle of zero is just 10 volts. 2.65 k ohms at an angle of minus 90 degrees is minus j 2.65 k ohms minus j 2.65 k ohms plus 20 k ohms. Okay, so now we've got something that we can plug into Wolfram Alpha and hopefully get an expression for V sub C. So we go to Wolfram Alpha, we have 10 times minus I 2.65 k ohms, so that's going to be uh, 2650 times minus I 2650 plus 20. And uh, let's see, we need this to be a divide right here. So if I've done this correctly, we get 10 times, yeah, it looks like we did. And we see from these results that Wolfram Alpha will take things out to an insane number of digits. 
So roughly taking the first three significant digits, we have 0 0.173 um, minus i times 1.302, or in polar coordinates, 1.314. At an angle of minus 82.45 degrees. So we can go then back to our circuit. If we're smart enough, there we go. And we can actually say that this is equal to 1.314 volts at an angle of minus 82.45 degrees. Okay, and so there you have it. Uh, we've done step three. Now, Wolfram Alpha makes the um, computations with, with the uh, complex numbers look easy. Uh, if you can use Wolfram Alpha, go ahead. Uh, hopefully, if not, you have a calculator or some other computing device that will do the computations with the complex numbers. It can be done by hand, like I had to do back when I was a kid. Um, we also walked uphill in the snow uh, both ways to school and uh, yeah, had to bang our rocks together to get fire in the evenings. But anyway, um, so there it is. That gives us step four. So now, I'm sorry, that gives us step three. So now we go back to our list of steps and we notice the last thing we need to do is convert phasers to sinusoids. So we go back to our circuit, and this V sub C is a phasor. Again, we found out that V sub C has this value. To get the time function, uh, V C of T, well, it's going to be 1.314 volts times the cosine of 377t, this is omega, which I found out way over here, minus 82.45 degrees. Okay, so that basically gives us our answer. Again, it's important that we make this last step because um, even though the phaser essentially contains the same information as the time function, uh, our goal usually is to have a time function. In this case, we know it's going to be a cosine with a shifted phase and an amplitude of 1.314 volts. So there you have it, an introduction to AC steady state analysis. Again, we talked about the concepts behind AC steady state analysis. The idea that because it's a steady state analysis, you apply an AC voltage to the circuit, you wait till all of the things that are uh, changing the transients die down and you're left with only the stuff that looks like a, a constant sinusoid. Sin uh, that's a terrible thing to say and I said it wrong. Uh, you're left with only the sinusoids whose amplitude and phases are not changing. That's much better. Um, we talked about the steps to do AC steady state analysis and as you can see um, steps 1, 2, and 4 are easy. Step three, we basically take what we've already learned in terms of solving circuits and use it to solve for phasor currents or voltages. Uh, the thing that changes is that now um, I have to do all my mathematics using complex numbers. So hopefully this has been helpful and uh, we'll talk to you later.